There's a billion dollar merger in the banana industry, which means gigantic bananas are just around the corner. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hill. Just another manic Monday on Wall Street. The Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500 index all down to start the week. Part of that being driven by trade data out of China. Part of that being driven by, hey, the market doesn't go up every day, so let's not get greedy. Joining me in studio today, Matt Argusinger and Taylor Muckerman. Guys, our top story. It was five years ago today that the S&P 500 fell to an intraday low of 666. Since then, the stock, I know, right? Since then, the stock market has been on a bull run. And while some expect the good times to continue, others think that the party is about to end. And one of them, hedge fund manager Seth Klarman. This is not Carl Icahn. This is not a guy who does a lot of press or tweeting or anything like that. He came out this morning and said he thinks we are very much in bubble territory. Right, Seth Klarman, not your garden variety hedge fund. This is a guy with a tremendous track record, over 30 years of really crushing the market. And throughout that time, he's, he's found times when it's really good to have cash. In fact, on an average basis, he's held between 20 and 30 percent cash in his uh, hedge fund every year and yet still has a tremendous track record. So when he says something, it's more than just shout out across the bow of the market. He's, he's really saying, you know, that stock, there are certain segments of the market, especially Netflix, Tesla, some of the companies we talk about regularly that really, you know, look very inflated for him. And then this overall, the market over the last five years has gone up tremendously. So he's seeing a lot of you know, uh, fluff or acid bubbles in, in particular areas that we we should start paying attention to that. I think he's still a little bit early, but we should start paying attention. Well, as we talked about a little bit earlier mm -hmm. today, you look at particularly the energy sector, right. there, there are still values to be found out there. Yeah, there certainly are. It's uh, historically cheap right now, especially on a global level. And then you look at, you know, tech, yeah, has maybe gotten a little bit ahead of itself. Some of these newer companies, a lot of investors pouring cash into them. But America is doing really well right now, I think. So if you're an investor focused on investing right now, putting more cash to work, I think America is a great place to focus. You saw the sell-off today from China and some weak export data. So there's still some weakness maybe internationally, but a company that is focused domestically, I think you've got some good, some good legs still. Where do you find yourself looking? I know you do focus a lot on technology stocks, but uh, where are you looking for? Yeah, I, I agree with Taylor on, on the energy side, but also, um, you know, U.S. definitely the place to be for sure. But I, the emerging markets have just done so poorly the last few years. I mean, really underperformed. And I would say there are certain countries, Mexico being one, that is investing a lot in its energy uh, industry that, that look pretty compelling to me. So if you're looking for bargains within, you know, maybe a slightly inflated market, emerging markets might be the place to go. All right, let's get to some of the day's movers and shakers. FMC. C Corp on the rise after the chemical company announced it is spinning off its healthcare and agricultural divisions. Is one better than the other? Well, you look at what they're doing, and they're keeping the minerals as one company and the ag and healthcare and nutrition separately. So you've seen a lot of companies doing this recently. DuPont and Dow Chemical are just two examples that have focused a lot of their R&D on agriculture and nutrition, spinning off some underperforming chemicals businesses. While I don't think their mineral segment is going to underperform because lithium is a big, a big base there, and with batteries and solar power really gaining steam, that's going to be a big business. But it is arguably one of the most abundant resources in the world. So if I was an investor, I would really probably concentrate on that ag and nutrition segment. McDonald's monthly same-store sales fell 0.3 percent. Not a lot, but it is the second straight month of falling comps. The first time that has happened in 11 years. Where does this stock go? Because the last couple of years, it hasn't gone anywhere. No, it's been a rough go. Yeah, in fact, yeah, McDonald's stock, I couldn't believe this, over the last two years has gone nowhere. And that's, uh, you know, during a period when the market overall is up 40%. So McDonald's is really underperformed. And especially, you know, I was looking at their Asia, Middle East, and Africa segment, which was down 2.6%. And if, if the growth is going to come from anywhere from McDonald's, it's going to come from, from those places. We know they've outsourced their Latin American business to Arcos Dorado. So, it's not really looking good. I mean, Europe is the only place that's actually looking positive, which is kind of ironic given how, how bad the economy has been in Europe. So I don't know. At McDonald's is trying some things. They're trying to tweak their menu, trying to get a little more healthier. They're also trying this new Build-A-Burger concept, which I don't know. I don't think that's going to have much legs given what people know about McDonald's. So I'm concerned here. I wouldn't, I'm not too excited about McDonald's. Retail Me Not, one of the biggest losers on the NASDAQ today. This is in the wake of last week's IPO by Coupons.com. 
I don't know. I just I'm I'm not oh, seeing dot com I'm not seeing it with the digital me. coupon business. No, I think that this company is just a, a Groupon or LinkedIn for big businesses, whereas they're more mom and pop oriented. I don't believe in any of this uh, deal website nonsense. I think that you know it, obviously competitors come out of the woodwork, as you saw coupons.com leapt almost 100% on its IPO day. So now there's another competitor in the space, and I think that's a big reason for the sell off. And finally, the McClatchy company hitting a five year high on word that its joint venture may be putting cars.com up for sale. It's great, I suppose, that they're going to get some cash on the balance sheet, but that doesn't really help the underlying business of the. McClatchy newspaper business, doesn't it? Right. I mean, you've got essentially, you know, a, an old school newspaper company. They own the Kansas City, Kansas City Star, Miami Herald, Sacramento Bee. Um, and they own 26% of this of this venture that owns uh, Cars.com. Now, if they sell Cars.com for three billion dollars, that's that's a pretty big number. That actually gets McClatchy more money than McClatchy is actually worth. Uh, <laughs> the problem is McClatchy also has three billion in liabilities. Mm -hmm. So even if they got 800 million out of the deal from Cars.com. It doesn't. It puts a dent, but not a huge dent in uh, in McClatchy's uh, you know, major liabilities. But I have to say, I mean, speaking of dot coms, I mean, it, it, it this shows you just how much how important users have right. come. I mean, Cars.com has 11 million users per month that come to the site for shopping for cars, and God, it's all about users right now. It seems like no, you know, there's no limit to what uh, investors are willing to pay for that right now. Do so. you think Seth Klarman is pointing to this and saying, "See, this is exactly"? I what think I'm this is about? A yet another example that he can point to and say, "Gosh, we are we're out of control," and in some some specific segments of the market for sure. All right, that's going to do it for today's action. Give me a stock I can put on my watch list. I'm watching eBay still. They're entangled with Carl Icahn right now. They voted down his two board member suggestions, board of director suggestions, and I think wisely so. Uh, this is a guy who kind of is retracing on some points he made in 2011, saying that some of the board of directors have conflict of interest and that they maybe sold Skype uh, under some, some duress there and, and didn't make as much profit as they could have. But you've seen the company do really well over the last five years, so I think that they're on the right track and eBay and PayPal have a lot of good synergies that I think they can build off each other a lot better than if they were separate. So I'll be continuing to watch because I don't think Icon's going anywhere. What about you? Well, I'm looking at Biglari Holdings, uh, you know, ticker BH. Um, about a week and a half ago, so Biglari Holdings, for those that don't know, it's it's a, it's run by Sardar Biglari. He's kind of a, a Buffett accolade, and he, he's mostly, though, Biglari Holdings owns Steak and Shake, which is a burger chain, Midwest burger chain. They own a big, uh, they also own a big chunk of Cracker Barrel, 20 percent. So I found it interesting when about a week and a half ago, Sardar Biglari, Biglari Holdings, they bought Maxim, which is the men's <laughs> magazine. Uh, financial de uh, you know, details haven't come out about it, but I'm just so curious. I mean, I, this is a company I follow, um, and I, I know Biglari is kind of a go-anywhere kind of investor. So it's, it's interesting to see how he's going to mesh the restaurant business with men's I can't even describe it. Ben's magazine, but you know, but I don't know. It's 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 just an interesting move. So I'm, it's one stock I'm watching. Well, we'll see but, him sold in Crackle Barrel's marketplace. Yeah, <laughs> and when you consider how well the magazine industry has done lately, I mean, sure. Yeah, right, you can it's a no-brainer. All right, for Taylor Markerman and Matt Argusinger, I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.